there is this you know when i look at just perception wise right um when you talk about a chef the perception always globally was you know there's a, a sir india mein bavarchi bol dete hain hmm right or you go to that and i think that's changed drastically obviously in recent times but there was always that that shift i remember one of the for me one of the big shift points globally was actually when you went on master chef australia oh yeah for me that was like one of those points this is the global stage and you've gone there with what is not chicken tikka masala which, yeah which is terrible it's the worst thing you can eat in your life um but you went with what is chicken it was i think master chef australia really was um uh, ground breaking for my career in many ways um first was that an indian chef yeah. how did it happen master chef australia was actually mixed effort from me and my brand manager kavneet um basically i was first being auditioned to do, be on master chef india but they auditioned me for two seasons as a judge and they told me i was too young and <laughs> as like sure as in it is what it is they needed seasoned people they needed seasoned chefs and um i was i was young as in i was 27 when they were auditioning me they wanted master chef was new to india they wanted chefs with more gravitas and more akshay weight. kumar but that's a whole ha i i with due respect to akshay kumar <laughs> as in they could have just got an another chef who could have but I, thankfully they learned quickly on that one yeah they learned they learned they learned and they and they of course grew um so i i won't take any merit away from from them also it's a difficult uh, format to crack in india especially if you're doing for a gc audience exactly um we are sort of the elite crop of of the food eating world which means um uh, you know 2 3% of uh, india can actually afford fine dining um so we look at food very differently and master chef australia is a by product of that but what it did was it elevated a lot of indians to travel and eat well or all indians who started to travel or get more exposed to global cuisines and cities while they were traveling they started appreciating the master chef australia journey it became aspirational that oh my god look at this food i would like to try this it was aspirational for me as well as as a chef who was young in 2010 and 11 when i started my journey as a food media person my only dream was to probably crack how can i land as a contestant on master chef australia i never would have thought in my life that i would land there as a guest judge so for me to that was a shocker and the amount of pressure i had on myself to be a guest judge because i knew everybody at home was watching it's like i felt like how cr- cricketers might feel when they go and play offshore <laughs> in australia or in london yeah. like people are people at home are watching you and like the first criticism i still remember i get for being on master chef australia was it are bada chicken kyu dikhaya we could have shown like so much of india and i get it as in when you're carrying emotions of hundreds or millions of billions of indians uh, they all want to be seen right just like how i wanted to be seen somebody wants to showcase their uh, dish from odisha or somebody wants to show their uh, masale from guntur or somebody wants to showcase their cuisine from telangana there is so much in a country so um i think how that really happened was um master chef australia's judges were visiting india i by then had started goila butter chicken as a brand it was very very new uh it was the hot sort of mover in mumbai back then uh which means it was 2016 everybody was talking about uh goila butter chicken because we became a thing on twitter and and instagram and facebook it was a hashtag that literally blew up because we had people like priyanka chopra nargis fakri uday chopra they were like giving us free branding and publicity and it was like you know they call it hand of god sometimes and i'm not a big believer uh, i'm not a very religious person but i would like to believe there was some kind of energy or some form of i don't know 
hand of god i guess that 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 is that is there that was there because as in we all work hard but sometimes you feel like the momentum is with you like the universe is being kind enough to you to give you something and you have to take it with both your hands and make the most of it and i think that's what i did i i saw an opportunity to start of course goila butter chicken um and when chef george was visiting mumbai for his first pop up in the country um kavneet who's my brand manager told george that there is this butter chicken that's doing the rounds in bombay and because you are doing uh, a pop up in mumbai you should try it out and he didn't have enough time to move around in the city to mm, eat mm. he wanted things to be delivered to him yeah. so she said he'd be perfect because yeah. he does deliveries yeah. um and um he said but i don't like butter chicken that was chef george's first comment to kavneet that i don't like butter chicken i've eaten plenty in australia it's too sweet and ha uh, he said like, i want to eat real indian food uh, but she said okay uh, we will also send you that but you must try this version of butter chicken so i took a lot of off the menu things for chef george as well um so kavneet called me she told me that chef george is uh, at ritz uh, at four seasons i think it was and and he was doing his uh, pop up there and she said you have one hour you have to reach sharp at 5 pm they would have cooked for their dinner service and they have this break 5 to 6 carry everything you can it's him and his team of six people so i have basically spent two days planning this menu for chef george making sure that he gets to eat something else apart from the butter chicken as well we had cool things like sindhi mutton on a menu so we which were like again from my home so i i gave him a little taste of not just butter chicken however when i and i was fanboying right i'm like are chef george from master chef australia i could not believe and i've landed there with like eight bags of food and he's like he was very sweet uh, his entire team was adorable he said this much food was not required <laughs> but i get it and they were in such a rush he's like we don't have time for cutlery and plates let's just eat from the boxes they have opened delivery dabbas they have opened rumali rotis and like you know true punjabis eat they yeah, are breaking into the rumali going at it from the dabba and i was like dude as in this is not the impression that i had of australians <laughs> they are very different when it comes to their eating culture they have gobbled it down i think the first reason was they were hungry um but when he was eating butter chicken you know sometimes when people are eating food you can observe you can make out if they are liking it or if they are eating just because they are hungry uh, and the first thing george said then to me directly he was like you know dude i have eaten many butter chickens in australia but this is not butter chicken <laughs> this is something else and uh, then i asked him but did you like it or not like i am he said that this is going to change everything that i know about indian food because i feel like i've been fed a lie all these years because you think if this is butter chicken then i can imagine what the rest of a rest of indian cuisine feels like and i told him that that you know what and that is exactly what i want to do i want to change the perception about indian cooking and indian cuisine by starting at the root of it which is punjabi khana gone global and god knows what kind of punjabi khana is gone global but it was a it was a part of the french gastronomy or the french movement across the globe in the 90s and this is what is a very heavy chef discussion but when the french cuisine was so popular the right way to elevate indian food or put it into the global market was to amalgamate it with a lot of butter and cream it's also a by product of the british raj in india we've taken to dairy uh, very well into our curries because of that reason if you will ask theet punjabis aapka khana kaisa hota hai wo bolenge hamare khane mein nahi jata makhan aur cream they will cook it in sarso ka tel or they'll cook it in ghee but cream aur makhan ka istemal bahut kam hota hai so the, which means that this happened to sort of revolutionize or fancify indian cuisine in the 90s and it's a part 
that all hotels, restaurants, they took to it because that made Indian cuisine popular. Made not it only spicy in, also, you make it sweeter by doing all of this. So all of that. So which which we all know is not Indian food. It's a as I said, it's a byproduct of where the world's territory was hand, uh, heading. It's not really our fault. We took to those techniques because we knew they will sell. Um, and every decade food evolves, right? So now we are in that evolutionary phase where people are looking slightly away from it. They've realized that Indian cuisine is beyond. And we wanted to feed people butter chicken, which was also beyond. So our first, so when George had it, he said, this must travel to Australia. We must show people what real butter chicken looks like and not that chicken tikka masala <laughs> that we get there. And I said 100%. So he instantly, this was October 2017, he instantly offered me that you have to come to, Ma uh, to Australia in February. And while you are there, we will see if we can do something fun. So in Feb 2018, I was in Australia, in Melbourne, doing a pop-up at Chef George's restaurant for 15 days. Our 15 days of pop-up was sold out even before we landed there. And for those 15 days, what I observed there, and we did not even know MasterChef's producers had come, eaten at the pop-up and went. So they, and then they said that we should get this onto the show. And um, I came back to India in end of Feb in, 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 this, in, in 2018. In March, I was back there in Melbourne filming for, this, for the show. And they said, but you will have to part with your recipe. Because the only way we can make this happen is we need to have Goela's butter chicken on the show. We don't want to just have butter chicken because then it'll be just another challenge. And um, I said, so be it. I'm like, it's a recipe that I've not created to keep with me or safeguard with me. My only intention of ever having created this recipe is for people to savor it. Now, whether they will eat it from my restaurant or they will cook it at home, I don't care. Like, I am not going to be the person who sort of was going to keep the recipe or the tricks with me. And that's how it sort of got cracked. And um, what, an, what an amazing experience it was to be on MasterChef Australia. Because now I was fanboying over three chefs <laughs> or uh, three uh, judges. I got to meet Chef Gary and Matt Preston. Um, that set was not really a set. It's a home. Um, but... I, when people got to know that I was going to MasterChef Australia, the amount of DMs and the, um, the kind of explosion I saw on my socials was unbelievable because suddenly the weight of everyone's expectations was that how is this challenge going to look like? And what I, what I discussed with Chef George and Chef Gary was let's keep this presentation basic let's strip it away from any presentation elements which makes indian food look different and chef gary was of the firm opinion that we should do that because he said as soon as you try to plate this it will not look like the food you get home get back home and we want people to see that this is how you can make a real butter chicken and not the version that you know from a tin can so to change the perception, let's present it still in the format it needs to be presented. But let's get the techniques and everything that accompanies it right, which means rumali roti, sirke wale pyaas, chutney. So the challenge was, of course, about getting all of that right. But I think I have never felt more proud as a person to be on an international sort of global stage to represent Indian food and... Um, one thing that I still feel very happy about is that everybody on that set the next day told Kavneet, oh my God, he's such a professional. We did not have to stop rolling the camera even once. I did not fumble a single time on that show. So that I feel very proud about because I know that I've groomed myself for that over the years. Where when I was on that set, I did not feel an alien to it. I sort of naturally fit there and they were all shocked. You know, sometimes you feel like an Indian chef is coming. How will he will he know the tricks of the trade or not? But um, I felt proud about that because the production team 
they really pointed that out that Saran should probably do more shows here in Australia because he's so good uh, in in talking about food and storytelling, and I think that's what it takes to really build entertainment. I think I'm a hundred percent sure there are more talented chefs than I than I am out there. People have different skill sets; they are good at. I am great at cooking, uh, but I have I have met cooks who sometimes you know you feel. he can do this better and but i know that there aren't a hundred chefs who can do what i do which is to be able to merge these two universes and be able to narrate uh the story about indian food which i think we need hundreds of me to do that uh, but yeah want more such insights make sure you check out the full episode